Hello and welcome back to another Momini Studio tutorial. My name is Tzach and I'm the Chief Technology Officer here at Momini. This is the first advanced level tutorial. Custom events and basic debugging, the two concepts being discussed today, are critical when making games with complex logic. Unlike the beginner and intermediate level tutorials, which focused on guiding the viewer through the creation of a game and learning studio features on the way, the approach with the advanced tutorials is quite the opposite. The goal here is to give an understanding of the advanced concepts while the creation of an interesting and functional game is secondary. Keep in mind that the complete use of the advanced concepts cannot be fully explained in a tutorial and further experimentation is required. Let's start by loading our MoBaby 2 game. As you may remember, the game makes heavy use of properties and capabilities and has three sprite types, Normal Baby, Super Baby, and cabinet. Cabinets are the obstacles of the game and keep on moving back and forth in a path. The baby types are both controlled by the user, moving at different speeds and each responding differently to collision with an obstacle. The super baby simply walks past the obstacle, effectively destroying it. The normal baby, on the other hand, cannot pass the obstacle and is thrown back a distance. Each time it collides, the throw distance increases. For our purposes in this tutorial, we will eliminate some of the game's functionality. First, let's remove the player control aspect from the babies. The easiest way to do that is by removing the movable capability from both babies. Neither baby type should not respond to key presses. Next, collision between a super baby and a cabinet should no longer destroy the cabinet. The super baby is simply going to walk past the cabinet uninterfered. Let's change our room a bit. This is a good opportunity to demonstrate the full screen mode. As you can see, entering full screen mode frees space on the screen, allocating the entire space to the room designer view. Let's delete all the sprite instances from the main game room. Instead, let's place five cabinets on the right side of the screen one below the other. We will now leave full screen mode. Instead of placing the baby statically, we will create an army of babies that will keep on walking to the right. This is similar to the way we had our enemy fish spawn dynamically in previous small fish tutorials. For the purpose of auto-generating babies, we will use a controller, calling it Room Manager. We would like to either create a normal or a super baby every second. This requires us to use a looping timer. In the controller's created event, we will place a start timer action, which will trigger timer 1 after 1000 milliseconds. Since we would like the timer to loop indefinitely, we must also place a start timer action within the timer event itself. We'll do that now. Good. We now have a looping timer that will get called constantly. It still doesn't contain any creation logic, so it will have no effect on the game. The time has come to add the baby creation logic, but how should we do that? Let's restate our goal. We would like to randomly create either normal or super babies at random positions on the left side of the screen and have them approach the cabinets at random speeds. Have use of the word random, but this should still not be very complicated. Normally, we would just add the create spread action with the relevant interactions wherever it is relevant. Instead, we will make our first use of the custom event. Events answer the when question. As their name hints, custom events do not have a predefined when. It is completely determined by the game creator. The event must be triggered manually. Those of you who have a basic programming background may notice that custom events are very similar to functions or methods in other development environments. By placing all our creation logic in one place, in the custom event, it will be much easier for us to manage the baby's creation logic of our game as I'll demonstrate later on. 
we will call our event create baby. Now, let's place the creation logic for a normal baby with some exact values. Initially, we will just create a normal baby, place it to the immediate left of the screen, mid height, and we'll give it moderate velocity in the direction of the cabinets. Lastly, we will specify a walking animation for it. Going back to the timer event, let's call our custom event using a call event action. Well, we have the babies appearing repeatedly from the left, but they're always normal, have the same speed and same starting positions. It is time to make our custom event more powerful using arguments. Arguments can be thought of as temporary properties that are only valid in the scope of the custom event and are given value when the custom event is called. Let's see how we can make use of that. We will add the custom event and in the bottom section add the following arguments is super, position x, position y, and speed. We will now change the values given in the move action from the numeric values to a new arguments. Notice that in the context of the custom event they are referenced in the same way global variables are referenced. There is no need to prefix them with self. Good. We still have to deal with the super baby part. To handle this, we will use an if condition that will check whether super was specified or not and create the correct baby. A value of zero would mean the created baby should be normal and any other value, super. Let's drag the create sprite action into the if condition. Now we place the else action below our if and create a duplicate of the normal baby create sprite action. We change the created sprite to super baby and we're done. How nice. Our custom event now supports all of these parameters. Let's try to put them into use. As you can see, all arguments were given the value of 0 by default. We'll start by changing the speed parameter to a random number. The position x should be set to the immediate left.